when it comes to the issues and the law on bail in this country. We have somebody who challenged the law and, and won in multiple circumstances and has inked his name in the legal jurisprudence of this country when it comes to the, the law on bail. And he's our guest. Martin Pebble is private legal practitioner, leader of the Komi Pekorilo de demonstration, and then also one of three individual bond order groups. And the man who, because of him, today we talk about all offenses being available. <coughs> but then the argument is that it's with conditions. Lawyer Martin Pebble, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Mr. Kansi. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here once again. I, I've learned recently that our show is the best in the country. Eh? <laughs> it's the most watched. <laughs> yeah, we've worked hard, right? Indeed, indeed. We've worked and thanks hard, to you yes. and, and, and I mean, Penny. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, and uh, as usual, just the two greetings or three. Let me greet uh, Kentucky Teku Chu. That's Gamanche, the venerable Gamanche. We are forever grateful for your wading into the Sicilia da Palmata. Gamanche says, how can one woman have so much money under her bed? And today, Ghana cannot even find money to get a proper pitch. We are begging to go to go and play uh, <laughs> this uh, football there. Can you imagine? Then, number two, I say, I'll you, I'll be the second. Domahini, yes, uh, good morning. He also has been waiting in, you know, mm -hmm. this Galamsey fight. He also gave government one, a one-month uh, ultimatum, eh? Good. Mm -hmm. And then, go so Hini. Uh, Nana Kwesi Bosompra. Yes, you know, he has also waded into the EC matter. Yes. Calling on the EC to allow the forensic audit to go on. So, <coughs> Nana Gosu Hini, we are grateful. And of course, Sophia Kufu, yes, and uh, Today, uh -huh, you see, we'll be talking about the 48 hour, uh, 48 hours is 48 hours, the Indeed. Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. That's Sophia Kufu's uh, last judgment on the Supreme Court before she left. So, usually it's called Validatory judgment. Mm. That was the last judgment. I'm sure we'll come. That was in sometime in 2019. Yes, yes, December 2019. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, Martin Pebu number four versus that Attorney is General your number case. four. Yes, to put uh, it that is public spirit. Uh, is a court. That's Pebu number four. four. Yes. So you see that these cases are cases that actually the Supreme Court saw that as we develop, mm -hmm. personal liberties were left behind. Mm -hmm. So the court thought that no. In this series of cases, they would also improve the law. So really, it's not about me at all. Me, I don't oh, but, need well, any publicity. You, you, well, it's I, a Supreme I, I, Court, you know, uh, from uh, Chief Justice George Nawu to Eni Yebua, and then uh, Sofia Kufu. You know, or from uh, George Nawu to Sofia Kufu to Eni Yebua. Yeah. So it's the court that is sought to improve the law. As for people, just leave my name out. It doesn't no, matter. How much. can we leave your name out? Uh, you you yeah. always accuse me of yeah. being modest <clears throat> in celebrating success. Mm -hmm. But this is you. Mm -hmm. You spent your own money to go and test the law, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, no, because now, we're we, it. It, has, it has improved our jurisprudence. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So congratulations yeah. to you. And to the Supreme Court especially. <laughs> especially. <laughs> because people number two was tough. The non billable decision. Because even if you yeah. look, yeah, the yeah. UK, US, no, their law doesn't match ours. They still have some clauses there. Mm. We will just remove them and say, look, leave it to the so judge. Yes, we have removed them. Because when you read the analysis, you see mm. Georgina Wood, Justice Benin, etc. They mm. analyze UK and US and you see that they still have clauses when it comes to extradition and the rest. But we saw that ours, the more you put, uh, fetters there, they, they will be subject to abuse. So we just cleared it and say, look, everything is in the hands of the judge. <coughs> Let the judge do it, rather than you allow parliament to tie the hands of the judge, right? Yes, yeah, so ours is better. Oh, Mr. Kansi, and then one very sad thing. Uh, Mr. Abona, uh, mm. Adam Bona, you are security fact. analyst. People are dying in Donkokrum and Kwewutafo. DSP Azugu, they say our so West war gone man. Yeah, mm. they are killing Fulanis. Within one, one and out. a half years, 10 Fulanis, I have seen that. 10 Fulanis be, have been killed and their cattle Azubu. taken. Yeah, Azubu, Azubu, Azubu. and so uh, so in and then Quarantine in Donkokrum. They are killing Fulanis. Look, last right. Thursday they came there, the Fulani community, they came there to lodge a complaint. 10 people, 10 it, of it, their. It's members. a matter we need to look into. 
Okay. And, and even though we don't have knowledge of this. Yes. You know, and cannot <coughs> independently confirm yes. this. Yes. Just but send your reporters to the homicide unit. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. We'll, we'll look into But at least thank you for bringing mm -hmm. uh, uh, my, my notice to this. And this is one that we'll look into as well. But also, because you've mentioned names already, mm -hmm. Dr. Adam Bona is a security analyst. He's joining us in the studio. Dr. Bona, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Alfred. Thank you for coming. Thank you. A former deputy attorney general, and it's for good reason that he's here because it's, it's mostly about, about the law uh, this morning. Dr. Dominic Ayene, I thank you so much for making the time to come as well. Good morning to you. Thank you very much for having me. Great. And also, I will be joined, in fact, he, lawyer Kinsley Amwakwa Buidu, is a private legal practitioner as well. Is a member of the MPP Communications and Legal Directorate. Uh, he's going to be joining us in a bit on this matter, and then we'll, we'll get into it. But a number of things, and let's start off first with Lamati and, Pebu, and just a, a first on this arrest, because there's that concern from the lawyers of these protesters who were held. Now we know they are 54. Mm -hmm. according to the police statement that uh, as of the day before they were arraigned before court mm -hmm. one they didn't know where these protesters were mm -hmm. even though eventually some of them got to got knowledge of some of the police stations that they were being held about 16 of them yes and then also they were denied access to legal counsel thank you and and also access to their family members yes. now the police says that's not the case but if you look at how things are played out is it consistent with with practice that in instances like this when people are picked up at the protest held going to be arraigned before court they don't even have if their lawyers don't have an idea of the charges they're being going to be preferred against and then also been denied access to their legal counsel and their family members? Not at all. Not, not at all. So as those things happened, I, I, I mean, I felt like ah, this, was, this wasn't Ghana. This wasn't Ghana. These things you've mentioned constitute a grave violation of our constitution. We'll be going shortly to Article 19, Clause 2, right? Yes. So as the police arrested these persons and would not allow lawyers to have access to them, would not allow relations to have access to them, I was like, ah, what is the crime? Why? For these small, small offenses, later I will come in. Yes, I know mm -hmm. uh, some of them, if you say stealing, maybe a second degree felony. But in this context, I mean small, small, compared to Chairman Wun to me, who has degraded the Tan on Imri Forest, doing Galamse, and he's walking free, and IG still has his office, and Madame Fosnando Kofi still has her office as CID boss. And then these young people come to draw our attention, and they get thrown into custody. I'm like, come on, this one pales, blocking roads to uh, 37, all right, etc. pales in the shadow of Chairman Wutmi, degrading the Tan on Imri Forest. The size was of over 10 football fields. If you watch the Erastos Asaridonko uh, uh, documentary, which we presented to the CID as part of our petition, mm -hmm. that's myself, Ken Ashibe, Kwame Saponasidu, and Edem Senanu. That's one petition. And then the second petition was by the Media Coalition Against Galamse. They presented the S to uh, IG. And IG presented that petition to Madam Andokufi. So Madam Andokufi is sitting on two petitions which they are involved in doing some put, pussy footing, kukwasa, kukwasa, some slow motion. They thought they could just play it very slow and then this government would go out. But unfortunately, you see Galamse is back and now it's eggs on the face of IG and Madam Andokufi, trying to aid criminals, trying to aid people who are... So you haven't gotten updates on how far they've gone with it? No, not right. at all. The last update we got was over a year ago when uh, they informed us that um, Chairman Wintmi had been called in, and Chairman Wintmi is Ashanti Regional chair, chair of the MPP. He had been called in, his statement taken, and then he was granted bail. 
So wouldn't me, I, I'm not advocating that wouldn't me be put in cells. So wouldn't me who degraded the Tanon Imre Forest and other persons, he hasn't even gone into the cells. Then the young people who came and uh, allegedly blocked because the case has not been dealt with, I have to say allegedly because they've not been convicted, mm -hmm. blocked roads or two keys. They are in cells for two weeks. It doesn't make sense. Not anywhere, except in a banana republic. It doesn't make sense. So then you were going to get into, into the, the position yes. of the law. Of the law. Yes, they are, they are suspects. <laughs> yes. Yes. In, in now they are accused persons. Yes. Okay, by an ordinary language, if you say suspect, meaning that they are still innocent. So it's fine. So please, the lawyers, we will not be tied to uh, strict legal terms. If you, call, if you say suspect in ordinary language, viewers mm -hmm. would understand. So though I will not be using accused, accused all the time. Sometimes we say suspect because we want effective communication, the one that will make viewers understand. Indeed. So what, what does yes. the law So Article 19, Clause 2, right? Mm -hmm makes it clear it has a number of provisions. Now, I'm interested in the one that says that when you arrest a, a person, right, says a person charged with a criminal offense shall, mm -hmm. I'm interested in the E. It says, be given adequate time and facilities for the preparation of his defense. Be given adequate time and facilities for the preparation of his, his defense. defense. So he would need a lawyer. The person is a lay person. Uh, when you take them into custody, there are two types of statements they take at the police station. Mm -hmm. You hear one, caution statement, caution, like the word warning. And then, but there is a ED at the end, cautioned, with an ED at the end. Mm -hmm. Caution statement, and then charge statement. So those are statements that the lay person has to write. So he will need a lawyer. He would need a lawyer. Because mm -hmm. earlier we've admitted that and uh, this is a person who is in custody will need a lawyer. That is the essence of Article 19. So he needs adequate time and facilities. Facilities will include getting a lawyer. You go on to uh, this in, uh, F, and it says, be permitted to defend himself before the court in person or by a lawyer of his choice. So you see, you see lawyers are mentioned in there. So before you go to court, these statements are going to be written. And so you need a lawyer, because <laughs> if you take it literally that he should write his own statement, then when he gets to court, a lawyer will come in. How? It just, it's like you'll be turning the law over his head. Because if he writes statements that incriminate himself or doesn't write things that will exculpate, that uh, show that he's not the one, he would have more or less, like we say in Ghanaian English, spoiled the case before he gets to the court. So you need a lawyer in there mm -hmm. from day one. And if the, the police says this in their statement, that they did allow them legal access, but initially they didn't want to to have anything to do with the police and that they were not answering questions. It was when they got to know that they were going to be taken to court that they gave their real names and so on because at some point they were given multiple names. That's, is, is, is that enough to, to justify the not being given access? Not at all, not, not at all. Look, these are serious matters. These are constitutional. These are constitution. And look, you know what? These matters I'm talking about, very soon we'll come to this book, the police itself. They've written a book. It goes beyond the constitutional provisions here. It's called Service Instructions. Mm -hmm. You see them talking about fundamental human rights. And I.G. Dampari was part, was part of those who drew it up. So the police themselves have written and said, look, they respect fundamental human rights. They will protect fundamental human rights, etc." So please, that is not an answer. I.G.'s name is here. It's number five on the list of those who were uh, uh, in the uh, take of affairs mm -hmm. in drafting these rules, right? right? So what the point we're making is that, yes, IG is here. That time, yes, number mm -hmm. five, COP Dr. George Ekufu Dampare, Director General ICT, committee membership. So at the time they were drawing it, he was Director General ICT. So today he cannot feign ignorance of the law he himself mm -hmm. read. And this right. is not the first version. When we say service instructions, this is not the first version. There, there, there have been older versions. When you go to the police headquarters, you know, one thing I always regret is that ah, in law school, I was never shown this document. It took about 10 years after law school before I had a chance upon it. So please, the lawyers, if you want to buy it, go to the back of the police headquarters, the shops there. That's where you get it. So that's the police, their own manual, talking about human rights. If there's time, we'll read copiously from it. Ah, even the older versions, you see it. Police give them food three times a day, etc. Yeah. The now they've modified. 
the yes. uh, persons who are held in detention. It's food three food, times three a times day. Food. The older version. Now you see they've changed the language a bit. Then they say protect their human rights. Of course, Ghana is moved forward. So if in the older version you say give food three times, and now in uh, section 15 you, you say they said they give them you know. So oh, that was debunked. Food. That was debunked. So fast let's. Food. That was debunked. They couldn't prove it. Today, you see, the police should know that because they've lost their public trust and confidence, if you are doing such a thing, gather evidence. The people who bring in the food, yes, there should be video, etc. Yeah. Yes, but ah, yeah. you see, you should always anticipate your opponent. Mm -hmm. You know that, look, uh, public trust and confidence in IG uh, Dan Paris leadership is at an all time low. So you should know that everything you're doing, they will be skeptics. So what do you do? Get video evidence. That's now, right. when you go to the demos, you see that the police themselves have their own cameramen there. Yes. So in the same way, if you are bringing food in, can't you see that people may say they've not received the food? So have video evidence of it, time. So uh, you know the way you can snap a picture, it will show. So if it's 9 a.m., it will show. So if, uh, uh, what do you call it, in the afternoon, lunch, you bring lunch, 1 p.m., you snap, it will show. You know, there should be a way, because the way mm -hmm. they are dealing with this whole matter is as if they can't anticipate what the public will do. That's and true. as a public officer, if you can't anticipate reactions from the customers or those you serve, then it tells you that your thinking is deficit. So let's go back directly to what you said. The last mm -hmm. question was that the police say because the protesters were not talking. Ah, if the person gives you multiple names, it's, this is not the first time. So you say Kwesi um, Yakubu, alias. So if he gave you two more aliases, you record that down. He told you. Mm -hmm. If he says I'm Kwesi Yakubu, the next time is Kwame uh, Chire, you write it down. You write it down. People have nicknames. You see on the chart sheet, they write Kwesi Yakubu, alias this, right? So mm -hmm. that's one answer. Then number two, you can't say because he's not answering how you want him to answer, then that means you should starve the person. That means you should not let the uh, person see a lawyer. No, no, no. This mm -hmm. right to counsel is absolute in this context, in this context, unless the lawyer had appeared there with a gun, in which case, hey, but mm -hmm. lawyer, why are you coming with a gun? Are you mm -hmm. coming to harm us, etc.? Those haven't happened. So when I say absolute, please, I'm talking about absolute in this context. Mm -hmm. By law, you can never say there's any rule which is absolute all the time. No, mm -hmm. something will arise that may uh, uh, warrant the curtailment of a right to a certain extent. As I said, assuming the lawyer was to come in there with a gun, which is preposterous, but okay. I'm just showing you as an example. Right. So please, 19 clause 2 cannot be whittled away because an accused person has given a different name. Ah, accused giving different names is normal. Look, you go to prisons, it's a normal thing. It's been there for long, all right? Even abroad, it happens, right? I'm not justifying it, but I just want us to know that police, that is your work. So you should be used to it, that accused persons who change names, etc. So that is it. Then the accused, they complained that they were not even informed, okay? about the nature okay, of the offense they had committed. So 19 clause, uh, clause 2 D says, when you arrest the person, when you charge, okay, you have to inform the person immediately. Uh, so I'm interested in 14 clause 3. Yeah, when you arrest the person, you have to inform him immediately of the offense. Why are you arresting him? So they are saying that most of them, they were never told anything, they were just taking him straight into custody, and then they will not allow them to see family. They will not allow them to see um, lawyers. So Article 19, uh, sorry, Article 14, 14 Clause three. 2. So we'll come to, we want to use 14 to okay. first. At the time of arrest, it says, a person who is arrested, restricted, or detained shall be informed immediately. So that's at the time of arresting the person. In a language he understands, of the reasons for his arrest, restriction, or detention, and of his right to a lawyer, of his choice. So you see that mm -hmm. we're talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So at the time of arrest, you know how arrest is done? The yeah. police has to hit your body, it's slight, it touch you. Okay, not hit, if you say hit, somebody <laughs> will make it a slap. So he will touch you and say, look, you are under arrest. Then he has to tell you. We'll see the charges that was. That, that's ex post facto. This one is talking about the time you arrest him. So when you get hold of him 
and, mm -hmm. and you mean... So at the time they were arrested yes. at 37, yes. at that point... You have to tell him, tell no, them. I'm arresting you because I, uh, listen, under our law, maybe what you've done here is this and this offense. You should know. You can't just come and start arresting the person if you've not done your research. Mm -hmm. Please, let's be very clear. You can't arrest the person if you don't know what crime he has committed. So by the time you are arresting him, yes, later on, your investigations can reveal other offenses. But minimum, at the time you are arresting him, you should know one offense. You can't just say, I've arrested and you. The no. the said they weren't told. The yes, offense. it's all of them. The police has not denied that one. Check mm -hmm. all the statements. They, they have mm -hmm. not denied that one. So please, this one takes effect. Immediately you hold the person and you don't intend to let him go. Hey, Mr. Okansi, I've arrested you because you're blocking this road mm -hmm. constitutes a criminal offense, or you're hitting Mr. X is assault, mm -hmm. okay? Or you're taking this phone without permission is stealing. You have to, it says in a language he understands of the reasons for his arrest, the restriction or detention and of his right, his right so to a at lawyer. The, at that point of arrest, they should have known that they, is, they, are, they are being charged with unlawful assembly, causing unlawful damage yes. and offensive conduct. Yes. These are the charges. Yes. So please, you them. can't arrest the person if you don't know the offense. You, and as I've said, other offenses can come in later. But if you don't know any offense somebody has been charged with, in this context, please, in this context, because when it comes to diseases, emergencies, and the same article uh, uh, 14, uh, somebody can be taken into custody for personal safety and the rest. Please, we are not talking about that one. So please, pardon me. Anytime I'm making categorical statement, let me make this one time a caveat. In this context, so I'm not making categorical statements for all time. No, in okay. this context. Uh -huh. So you should know. You say he's playing football or he's blocked the road. What offense is that? He should know. You cannot just take him into custody and then later go and open the law books and start looking for offenses. No. That is what it means by you should have done your investigations and gotten what we call probable cause. Please. That's a technical word. Probable cause. So you should know that what he has done is probably this offense. If you don't know any offense, you can't arrest him like that. As mm -hmm. I've said, I've made the exception for mm -hmm. when somebody quarantined because of a uh, disease like uh, COVID and the rest. That's not what we are talking about here. But in this case, you should know. That's one. So, and you see, have you seen the police talk about that one at the time of the arrest? No. All of their statements, have you seen them? They've not addressed it. The ones they want to address, they will address. Later, we'll come to how they even did the medical test on the Gloria uh, Louise without consent and put out somebody's uh, medical information. How? Okay, so you are talking about one, the access to the lawyers. Then two, the feeding. I'm a governor. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm a, uh, a baby. Yes? She said they were starved. Felicity Nelson, she said it. They were starved. Each time, they're giving food on their way to court. You see, so that they can come and inform Justice uh, Obri Ebuwa that they've given them food. I mean, that is bad faith. Your own law says that you protect human rights, your own service instructions. You say you protect human rights. You are not giving them food. You wait. Well, on their way to court, that is when you now come and give them food so that you can inform the court that, yes, you've given them food. Please, that is not law. That is bad faith. Uh -huh. Which other of the uh, 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 infractions are we talking about? Beyond 48 hours. That's the next one. Well, so, yes, Paragraph that's, that's, 21. That's, that's be Parag before you even read that, the police itself, I think in their last statement that they put out, have indicated that they, they held two persons beyond the 48 hours, and that matter has been referred to the Police Professional Standards Bureau, formerly PIPS. And so uh, in order to establish exactly how and why these persons were held beyond 48 hours without being sent to court for necessary disciplinary action to be taken against those responsible. Per the records as you have it. I say as you have it because you have been involved in the take of affairs mm -hmm. with, with these protesters who have been arrested. Yes. Is it the case that only two of them were held beyond 48 hours, as you do know? Because of the restrictions on seeing the uh, uh, investigate, uh, sorry, the uh, suspect, accused persons, uh, I've not <laughs> been uh, listen, seen any information beyond the two. Mm -hmm. But in the coming days, yes, we would go into that. 
will go to, you know, these are persons that f for quite a number, almost all of them, the first time lawyers had access to them was when they were being brought to court. Okay, that's brought to the court. Look, there's even oh, one of them. Morning. Yes, mm -hmm. even one of them, to the extent that he was taken to circuit court 10. No lawyer had seen him. So the case was called, and uh, Noah Adamte, lawyer who appeared for him, said, mm -hmm. oh, my lord, I, had, I think that's Benjam Benjamin Daku's case. Mm -hmm. My lord, oh, can, I, can the case be stood down so that I'll have conference with the client? They just said, no, 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 no. In the public interest, we will just uh, remand him. So lawyer, an accused, doc, Eh? Dr. Ayini, you have taught us law. Mm -hmm. Somebody has been brought to court. He's not seen a lawyer. The lawyer has appeared in court. My Lord, can we stand down this case? Let me have conference. Yeah. Let me have conference. The court they just said no. In the public interest, I'm remanding him. And just remanded, just like that, offhandedly. Meanwhile, those are the very things that the Supreme Court sought to stop in table number two. When you read the decision over 100 pages, you see them bemoaning the way judges have abused the rights of uh, decent citizens. Why? They give you power. What's the rush? What's the rush? Just give the lawyer 10 minutes to talk to the client. Noah Adamte, he was in court 10. Yes, it's, uh, uh, this is it. Uh, Samoa. Yes. Evelyn. Court 10. Noah is there. He came and reported. If you say it's, it's false, well, we can activate the necessary processes. Noah Adamte appeared for Benjamin Daco, says he wanted to talk to Benjamin Daco before the case. The judge said no, in the public interest. What public interest? When Chairman Wuntmi is walking free, so, Wuntmi who has degraded the forest, so, he is walking free. The man who has allegedly blocked the, the road, he should just go in. What public interest? What public interest so that was the is that? the first time he was seen? Yes, time. Benjamin Daco, uh, so, part of but, the protesters. I mean, what, he wasn't allowed. What I want to find out, those who were picked up a week ago, Saturday, Yes. So those are the persons who were held beyond 48 hours because those who were exactly so on Sunday, yes, Tuesday would have been the 48 hours. Thank they would you, satisfied that. Thank you. But could the police have arranged these two or, or the persons who were arrested on Saturday before Tuesday because Monday was a holiday? Perfect, yes, and that is what so far Kufu did, yes, and to in the uh, Pebble number four versus Attorney General number four. And before then, let me just read the human rights provision, then okay. we'll go into the Pebble number four. It says, respect for human rights, 14. That's what I'm reading from the service instructions. In the performance of their duties, police officers shall respect and protect, yeah, when you say protect, human rights, human dignity, and protect human dignity, maintain and uphold rights for all persons. Let's read it, it's a base disjoint. In the performance of their duties, Police officers shall respect and protect human dignity, maintain and uphold rights for all persons. All persons. So this mm -hmm. 14, and that their own service instructions. So service instruction number two, sub part 14. Sub part 14. That is the police service instruction. So it's not just the constitution. You yourselves, you've written. And you say that shall respect and protect. When the, when the word, please, let's understand it. The word protect means that you take steps to help the person to enjoy those rights. Mm -hmm. The respect one, if the person already has it, don't infringe it. But the word protect, when you are protecting the right, you allow, you take positive steps to help the person. So give food, allow access to lawyers, etc. So those ones involve the police taking some actions. I'm right. interested in the word protect. Right. It's as a technical meaning. You take positive steps to do something for the person. Don't just say protect means, oh, you just said, no. It's a respect that you may not necessarily do too much. But the word protect technical, when it comes into human rights, uh, this uh, uh, jurisprudence, you will take positive steps to give the person human rights, so food, health. You know, Oliver was sick, etc. He has also claimed he was not allowed to see a doctor. They brought a private doctor to come and see Oliver. The police made sure that the Doctors stood at the uh, headquarters there for hours before they allowed access. What is it? Even the coup plotters case, uh, ACP Agojo's case, Justice Ekobedin gave bail. Then he granted bail. What happened? What happened? Even the ones who are said to have been interested in um, overthrowing a coup for Ado, they got bail. But there, was, there was this gentleman, a brother of one of the protesters, yes. who we spoke to, indicated yes. that 
his sister was suffering from a number of conditions yes. and she was also denied access to the family yeah. as of the time we were talking to him the asthma pump that she needed had not been given to her mm -hmm. i want us to hear from the brother and then also uh, i'll come to you dr bona on this let's take a look and while we are at it let me just remind you as well uh, that as we go on uh, acp benjamin agojo retired is going to be joining us as well let's take a look we scouted through the various police stations and then at around 9 p.m we found her at kaneshi i requested from the counter nco to speak to my sister what you could do best was to refer me to their station officer and then the station officer said they were working under specific um, instructions from the regional command that um, those who were arrested in relation to the protest um, shouldn't be allowed any form of access by anybody, not a family member, not even a lawyer. The caller told me that my sister is not fine and so we should come and see her. I walked back to the gate. The officer in charge said no. My sister has um, complicated health issues. She's diabetic, she's asthmatic, and then she has glaucoma. We are not able to tell whether she's in a stable condition or not. Asthma can be triggered at any time. BP can be triggered at any time and place her in danger. We do not understand why someone who ordinarily was just filming the protest or streaming the proceedings of the protest live on his social media handle should be arrested and then detained for three good days. Well, so th that's a separate case from what you have been talking about, Council. Yes. Yes. And this is one of a number of cases of persons who, were, who had one yeah. condition or the other being denied access. Mm -hmm. There was also another incident of some persons who are passerbys. Yes. They weren't even involved mm -hmm. in the protests. Yes. And in this case, this person said his sister was filming yes. the the. And, and then and she the, was picked up. The people who were passing by who, who were also picked up yeah. as well. Yeah. How should that have been treated? I mean... Look, this whole thing, because there are doubts, that because the accused are said to be innocent, not just said, the Constitution says in Article 19 that a person is innocent until proven guilty. That is the heart of the people number two versus attorney general number two. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll come to it in the next chapter, yeah. right? So once there are those doubts, Admit them to bail. Look, in any serious country, we will not be charging these protesters in the first place because what they are led to have done, I will call that publicity stunt. S T U N T, okay? Stunts and add S. It's, it's something you do differently to draw the attention of duty bearers. This blocking of roads, okay? Yes, it's just a publicity stunt to draw the attention of duty bearers. So that's not a crime you are busy charging. You see, Godfrey Dami is busy, interested. He is taking this case, right? Godfrey mm -hmm. Dami, we yeah. presented a case against Chairman Wun to me. The case with C.I.D. Dampari and uh, uh, Fosina and Okofi. You were asked about this case more than seven months ago. You said you didn't know anything about it. Why didn't you take steps to go and ask the police to bring the case? After all, you know, under the law, Article 88, mm -hmm. the, the, the police don't have power by themselves to go and prosecute offenses. No, mm -hmm. it's the attorney general that gives them power. So you see that the police are in court because the attorney general gives them power. The day the attorney general revokes all of the power, police only come to court to testify as the investigators, as investigators, and also to bring accused to the court, but mm -hmm. not as prosecutors. So, Godfrey Dami, you heard about this chairman wound me case, okay, through a Joy FM interview more than seven months ago. You've never been interested in your Ashanti regional chair person facing the full rigors of the law. But this one that protesters did some publicity stunts. You, okay. you want to call that Yes, I, that's stunts. my word. And so these protesters are actually political prisoners. They are not ordinary criminals. They are not criminals. They are just political prisoners. They did it because, you see, from 2018, Ekufuado has been sloganeering, I'm prepared to put my presidency on the line. I'm prepared to put my presidency on the line. And, you know, and you know, waxing lyrical, waxing lyrical, I'm prepared to put my presidency on the line and not doing much not doing much, just attention grabbing, grabbing headlines all over, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then other things, Operation Galamstop, Operation this, 
and all haven't been sustained, right? As for excesses, there will be excesses. So the time Galan stopped and the rest had their issues, you had to deal with that and continue. Then you withdrew them. So what these young people are doing is that, let's do something differently. Well, all over the, the world, the, the activists concern, do that. The concern there is that in doing something differently, it also got to the point where it infringed on the law. And that's why the police took this action, as in instances where the, 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 the protesters, and as you indicated, there were excesses. <laughs> And I'm not admitting. I'm not admitting. The case is in court. Mm -hmm. So in uh, this, when you come into jurisprudence, there is what positive defiance. You think it's every time that the law will be uh, obeyed? Even the constitution says when you see somebody doing a coup d'état, you to take arms. If you can, can, if you can counter the coup d'état, it's not an offense. Check Article Three. So this, uh, these are uh, uh, the, uh, the political prisoners. They've not committed any offense. It's a way of registering the public uproar, the public disguise. It's not just public uproar. The existential threat, that's the word. We are all faced with an existential threat. Ghana water says what? Now when they process water, they get only 40% of the water. Mm -hmm. eh? Out of 100%, only 40 is good. Then they spend four times more. Is that not so? Their own statistics. Stability is gone through the roof. So that is the narrative. And yet, won't me is walking free. So they just did this stance, stance, okay, stance to draw attention. These are not criminals. This is just but if publicity stance. Stunt. Public concern, as in. Yeah, the public will always or, be concerned because don't forget, we have different levels of knowledge. Different le levels of knowledge. So some people who don't know the full law, as soon as they see any small bridge, yes, 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 yes. Let, so let, these let's... are the charges: conspiracy to commit crime, namely mm -hmm. unlawful assembly, and unlawful assembly causing unlawful damage, mm -hmm. offence con con conduct conducive to breach of peace, mm -hmm. assault on public officer, and mm -hmm. and they have, in fact, in all these instances captured, yes, yes. and then some of the instances, yes. and, then, and they were stealing. Yes, exactly. Yes, and stealing. Uh -huh. You see, and in all of these instances, they make reference to the conduct of yes. the demonstrators on, within that three-day period yeah. that they were on the streets. Yes. And some of the instances they were engaged in, in yeah. blocking the roads by themselves. Yeah. And then also, at some point, pushing the police, the barricades, and so yes. on. Does that raise concern for you? Oh, naturally, it will raise concern. Good. So if you say concern, I will admit, yes, there is concern. Because naturally, you know, we are a very conservative society. So it raises concern. But the fact that we've ratcheted it up to say these are criminal offenses, that is where the problem is. But as for concern, yes, because our society is largely conservative. We are calm, we pride in ourselves, peace, love, and peace, love. But when you continue to be peace, loving, you allow crooks to cause mayhem. That's the thing. So viewers, as you listen, the politicians are not gentlemen. Though. That's a mistake people make. Look, you see, you think because the politician comes to church with you, because he's in a football club with you, because they are not gentlemen. Don't make a mistake. Politicians are usually crooks. So we, when you are dealing with crooks and you come and sit here, oh, you analyze gently, softly, they won't listen. That's why the young men did what they did. When you read activism and the rest, you have to do it differently. And yes, sir, you will hear in tree, they commonly say, oh, a hurua a bejo. That's why the politicians know. They say, oh, a hurua a bejo. Then they say, we have short memories. Oh, give it two weeks, it will pass. Please, these are the things. That's the way a politician thinks. So the, the young men have to do something different. These are stunts. These are not offenses. Then two statements, you asked about the 48 hours. Just brief on yeah, it and yeah, we'll go. I want us to conclude. So in 2019, yeah. as we stated earlier, December 2019, the Supreme Court held in Pebu number four, the Attorney General number four, that when a person is arrested, that person must be brought before a court of law within 48 hours. Whether within that 48 hours we had weekend, Saturday, Sunday, or public holiday, or even strike, even, even if within that period the judicial service is on strike and they lock the courts, mm -hmm. the law is that they provision will be, will be made, yeah, because the court is locked, provision will be made 
for the accused to be brought to the house of a judge. Of course, in our past, in the 80s, Rawlings regime, they killed judges. That, that's bad, OK? We'll leave that for another time. But you know, we have to continue trying. We can't say because some judges were killed in the past, we'll not allow an accused person near the house of a judge. Of course, it doesn't necessarily mean his house. They can find another facility. So mm -hmm. it will not necessarily be the home of a judge, maybe a different public space, I mean, I somewhere. See. So that is a Supreme Court decision. And please, very, very important in it. Let's note this. When we say within, please, the first thing is that within 48 hours, you should be in the court before the 48 hours uh, listen, uh, expires. Be in the courtroom before 48 hours expire. It doesn't mean that, so it's wrong to think that it's 48 hours, then you start preparing to okay. go. No, that's one. And then two, mm -hmm. just last point. The Supreme Court said, if it's clear to you from day one, as soon as even before the arrest, if you think the case is too complex so you cannot finish within the 48 hours, just at the time of arrest, then you start preparing to take him to court. Mm. At the time of arrest, because if from day one, certain offenses may be complex. So let's say a coup d'etat. A coup d'etat, if only, of course, it's not a kitchen coup, mm. but a proper coup d'etat, you can finish investigations within 48 hours. So as soon as you arrest, whilst people are doing investigations, a different police officer will be working on the court papers. That's why we have so many, look, the police have a lot of men. You see, we are using so many of them for police visibility. So the CID should be doing his work. You can take some from the police visibility and train them how to prepare court papers. So that while the CID is taking statements, doing other things, then the other one is helping to type. Don't let the same CID in practice. The investigator is the one who will finish interrogation, mm -hmm. then go and type and then, no, share the work. So let me leave it. So please, that's table number four. Please, whether Saturday, Sunday, or public holiday, the courts will be open within 48 hours for you. And I have gone, I've, 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 I've attended courts within that period. Constitution Day 2022. The mm. case that happened around, uh, this is Nalerugu, yes. uh, this is Deboku, this is one of the cases. They were brought to Accra. I was in court with the Attorney General on 7th January uh, 2022, right? Mm -hmm. And then the... Um, other, there have been other cases. I see. So, so I just wanted to establish that there's a provision in our law that indeed the police could have gone to court and have these persons arraigned on a public holiday that was Monday okay. instead of having them in custody beyond the 48 hours that's and arraigned them before court on Tuesday. So that's established. But I need to say this, that the reason why I spent quite some time with Martin Pebu is that this, this, this case and the law bothering on this case, he has tested and won cases and has contributed significantly to the legal jurisprudence that we have in this country with respect to arrest and bail. And, and that's why you keep hearing him refer to people number one, two, three, four. These are cases that he won and that improved on our legal system and justice delivery in this country. 